This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Mutual Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, the X Zone Broadcast Network, and in Europe on Radio X. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can find out what's going on here on the Exxon Radio Show by going to our website, exxonradio.com. Don't forget, Exxon Nation, as I have been promoting all night tonight, for you, the members of the Exxon Nation, we have something very special. If you go to www.exxonetv.com, we have opened up Season 1, which was 2015, the 12 episodes of the Exxon TV show, with our compliments. Once again, that's at www.exxonetv.com. My guest this hour is Candace Talmadge. We've had the pleasure of having Candace on the show before. We're going to be talking tonight about Candace's new book, The After Healing Circle, How Anyone Can Contact the Other Side. It was published in 2015 by New Page Books with a foreword by Dr. Raymond Moody, who we've also had here on the show. Now, um, Life After Death. People talk about it each and every day. Now, apparently, of the 2.4 million plus deaths every year in the United States, more than 41%, or in excess of 1 million, are unexpected, and that's according to itsmylife.com. In a few cases, those who die are household names such as rock legend Prince. Hundreds of millions of fans worldwide are mourning his passing. The majority of those who die are not known except to loved ones. Famous or obscure, unexpected deaths leave behind unfinished business beyond practical considerations such as wills or burial wishes. This business is emotional, not being able to say goodbye or I love you. 
Things left unsaid can keep survivors locked in grief for years. Take Clara, a woman whose story of mourning her dead mother for two decades is recounted in the After Healing Circle, how anyone can contact the other side. Joining me now to talk about this and much more is the co-author of this book, as well as a good friend of the Exxon, Candace Talmadge. And Candace, welcome back to the Exxon. Well, thank you, Rob. It's so great to be back. Congratulations on your book. And, you know, it seems that communication with the death, with the dead, I should say, is more and more popular today than it was five, ten years ago. More and more people believe that it is possible to communicate with the dead. And are you finding this out when you're going out talking to people, doing your lectures, doing your symposiums, that this otherwise taboo subject is now part of everyday living. Yes, and I think it's because um, of what I call the afterlife movement. All right? It, um, it started with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross back in the late 60s mm-hmm. and got really into full gear when Dr. Moody published his groundbreaking book, Life After Life. Yes. And it's, it's really a movement that as the decades passed and more and more evidence compiles, there was a survey, they, they pulled information from the social survey, um, and it was led by the University of San Diego and a couple of other institutions, and they, so, you know, the psychologists and sociologists poured over this, and they, they came up and said, yes, uh, people may not believe in God, but they do believe in some sort of afterlife, and to me, that is direct evidence that this movement, and I say that is a, is a loose term, this movement mm-hmm. really has gained ground and captured people's attention and presented uh, evidence that is very convincing. Um, uh, the, the afterlife experiments out of the University of Arizona, led by Dr. Gary Schwartz, uh, I've read that book, and it's, you know, he's preaching to the choir with me, but it's extremely compelling evidence, and it certainly turned his world around. Um, he, he came in as a skeptic, and he, he's now a believer. Candace said... Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine, such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair, featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere, or visit marshlanding.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the Exxon Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say, it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life 
to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony, a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. Welcome back, everyone. Candace Talmadge is our special guest at this hour. We're talking about Candace, Candace's book that she co-authored. It's entitled The After Healing Circle, How Anyone Can Contact the Other Side. Her website is www.thehealingcirclebook.com. When should one try to connect with the other side, Candace? When there is unfinished emotional business, when you have a real connection with the person who has died, all right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, you know, Prince's death, people mourned him, but the, the feeling, um, unless it was one of his friends or family members, the feeling was not reciprocated. So you are tempted to use the afterlife healing circle to contact Prince because you really loved his music and sure. you want him to let him know. But the fact is that you probably won't get Prince. You might get some sort of deluded soul who thinks he's Prince, but not the real Prince, because there has to be a two-way emotional connection between the people who, the person who comes in to ask for a circle, the person we call the Inquirer, mm -hmm. and the soul who the person would like to connect with. So there really has to be a valid em emotional and that unfinished business that you were talking about at the start. That is the need, and if it's genuine and there's that reciprocal tie, then the afterlife healing circle is a very valid way. It's only one way, but it's a very valid way to try to make that connection and resolve that unfinished business. So these people who claim that they've been communicating with the other side, they've communicated with John Lennon, they've communicated with Princess Diana, and so on, do you mean that unless they have had a, a connection with this person while they were alive, that they're just basically sending out a lot of hot air? Well, I can't tell one way or the other. I can't prove it one way or the other. Okay. What I will say is that if they communicated with the soul, uh, the soul may be pretending to be the person they wanted to reach. Again, it's because, think about it. Rob, if you were walking down the street and mm -hmm. a group of people said, Rob, Rob, over here, come on over here, we want to talk to you, and there was someone in that circle you knew and you cared about, you'd go on over, sure, sure. no problem. Yeah. But if it's a group of total strangers and they started calling out, Rob, Rob, come over here, you'd go, uh-huh, and you might just sort of walk away at a little faster clip. Not well, me, exactly I'd go over You'd go over, well, you're probably friendlier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah. You know, um, if you're a total stranger on Earth, then you're, you're a stranger in the afterlife, which doesn't mean you can't make friends either here on Earth or in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. But you're not as likely to get the soul that you really care about and want to connect with unless you have that reciprocating tie, that emotional connection, and it's two ways. And honestly, you know, people who do Ouija boards or they just sort of sit up and go, is anybody here? You know, guess what? They'll find someone, and they might not like what they find, because just as there are people who have less than savory intent on Earth, there are souls with less than wholesome intent on the other side. Why would a soul on the other side 
impersonate the soul of someone that is being sought. Like, aren't there any rules and regulations what you're supposed to do, what you can do, and what you can't do when you're a soul? Or is it a basic free-for-all? Well, it's sort of like on Earth. Why would someone impersonate someone in a physical body impersonate someone else? Hmm. All right, there are a million reasons. Same thing in the afterlife. I think, Rob, one of the things here we're not talking about is this myth or misunderstanding that when you die, you become all perfected, all, perfected, all enlightened, all knowing. Um, what researchers have found to their great surprise, because that myth is rather pervasive, is that souls are just like us, except they don't have bodies we can perceive as physical. So whatever wisdom you left this, this planet with, mm -hmm. you have it in the afterlife. But whatever issues and whatever limitations you have here, you still have there. Wow. You know, um, Arthur Ford used to say, you don't get no smarter just because you crossed over. And that's true. You don't. So, yeah, souls in the afterlife, maybe they're just wanting to play head games with these people. Who knows? But what happens... If you try to connect with a soul on the other side who has already returned in a reincarnation. Well, the interesting thing is that soul to, I call it soul to soul communication. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. In fact, in my healing work, I often do soul to soul communication or help my clients do that with people who are still in a physical body. All right? They're people that have is issues with and they need resolve. So it doesn't really matter. The difference is that if you have crossed over, if your physical body is dead, you do not have the chance to sit down face to face and have that talk. You have to communicate at the soul to soul level. But whether or not that person is in a physical body really doesn't matter. You always are a soul. You always have the chance to communicate through those beautiful soul senses. It's just that you need something like the afterlife healing circle if one party doesn't have a physical body. Exonation Candace Talmadge is our special guest this hour. www.thehealingcirclebook.com Candace, what is, how is the best technique to be used by someone who, for the right reason, is trying to contact a soul on the other side? Well, I love the afterlife healing circle, but there are other techniques. There's the mirror gazing that Dr. Moody's uh, book, Reunions, talks about. Um, there's also a chance that the soul will want to contact you in a dream, and that's another way. But the problem, the issue is that people are so astonished that they've been contacted by someone who's quote-unquote dead, that they sometimes have trouble having just a simple conversation. They're like, oh! <gasps> I'm talking to this this ghost or the soul. Oh my, you know, and they don't mm -hmm. they don't say, "Okay, what is it that I need to say? What what did I want to say? What's my unfinished business?" When you have the afterlife healing circle, you have a small group of supporters who are there. They're getting the same information you are at the same time, and they're helping you fill in those blanks and flesh out the conversation. So whatever it the two parties need to say to each other, they can say it. That's what I love about the afterlife healing circle. You know, when you're doing an afterlife healing circle, has it ever happened where the soul has materialized and you can see the person? No, that has not happened in, in the circles that I have attended. Uh, we one time had this one, you know, we used to do them with these swivel chairs that are very comfortable because you can kind of, if you're in a circle, they've got armchair, you know, you can get real comfortable because mm -hmm. you're in that position for about 45 minutes. And sometimes it gets a little uncomfortable. Well, we were on a perfectly level floor and nobody's other chair, but the inquirer's chair, when she put her feet up, it would swivel back and forth. You know, nobody else's chair was moving or, you know, but hers was doing that. But as soon as we asked our... Uh, guardian angels, our spirit guides, whatever you want to call them, to protect us and, and got going in the circle, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff stopped. So I, I, I'm not really into phenomenalistic stuff, all right? I, I don't need a soul to materialize, to know in my heart that we've connected and the emotional resolution has, has transpired, because that's the difference between 
what I do and what, say, a researcher does. All right, Rob? Researchers try to go for, quote-unquote, facts. They try to prove things. I'm a healer. I'm interested in whether or not the person who came, the inquirer, Mm -hmm. can connect with that soul and in whatever way and in whatever form get some healing resolution. That's my purpose in offering the Afterlife Healing Circle. I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone. I don't think I can. Personally, I don't think any scientist can either. True. I think people are going to. I think people are going to believe what they want to believe. All right. Um, but I think once you sit in that circle, and you experience getting a vision or getting a feeling or hearing somebody whisper in your ear yeah. or getting a thought pop into your head that the inquirer says yes to, meaning the, the inquir- it means something to the inquirer. And then you help the inquirer start to connect with that soul and say, I love you. I, I didn't mean to, uh, to, to yell at you, you know, before this soul walked out the door and died in a car accident or whatever it was. When you feel that, when you experience it, uh, as one person was talking about, when you fill in each other's blanks when you're in that circle, then emotionally you convince yourself. And facts really aren't the issue anymore. It's what you felt, what you've experienced that's real to you. And you and I and the members of the Exo Nation know that the power of belief is the strongest power in the universe. It moves mountains. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is there any age limit that you would put on when it comes to people trying to communicate with the other side? Actually, I think I would, you know, as long as a parent or guardian was mm-hmm. with them, I would do it for, a, 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 say, a teen in, like, 14 or up, right. all right? Um, I don't know if younger children can, can do it, but as long as a parent or guardian is with them, maybe the, the, the teen and his or her mother wants to connect with a deceased father, that would be perfectly appropriate for me, you know, as long as someone there, an adult who's responsible for the child, is there, then I would work with them. But again, it's, it's really, is this person able to understand what death means, and does this... This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, Candice, when it comes to people who want to participate in an afterlife healing circle, do you find that there is one demographic that is more predominant than the other? For example, do more women want to participate in the healing circle or do more men want to participate in it? I have found that it's been my experience and Jana's experience that most of our clients, not all of them, 
most of those who've come to us have been women. All right. I don't know why that is, but I think women are, they're more open to looking for help when they have unresolved emotional issues. They, they don't seem to ignore them as easily as, as guys do. They tend to want to just sort of compartmentalize that into some area. But not all, not all our clients have been, been women. Can you share with us any stories, any, any, of the, any of the positive work that you have seen yourself when it comes to people who have participated in the afterlife healing circles? Well, Clara, the woman you started talking mm-hmm. about, um, she's one of the stories in the book, and that was actually the first circle I attended. And it was really, really very powerful. This woman had had mourned her mother for two decades. She had been through daily um, psychiatry, psychiatric sessions. She'd been through psychotherapy. And she'd gotten a lot of help from both types of, of um, you know, therapy. But none of the doctors or psychologists had been able to help her heal the wound of her mother's death. So her daughter is actually one of Jana's clients, student or client or some such relationship. And she mentioned that her mom had this problem, and Jana said, well, look, we can do a, a circle for your mother. Talk, talk to her about it. So Clara told me as soon as she heard it, that was it. She wanted to do it. So we went through this circle. It was amazing. I mean, if I'd had socks on, they would have been blown off. Um, and everybody benefited. It wasn't just Clara's healing, although Clara definitely got a lot out of it. I benefited, Jana benefited, all the people who were in that small circle really benefited. Because, see, that's the, the blessing of the healing circle. It, it doesn't just help the inquirer and the soul in question. That's the, what we call the, the, the soul the, the inquirer wants to contact. Everybody who participates, everybody who experiences the love that goes around the circle, Mm -hmm. everybody who gets information and shares it and compares notes and and supports the inquiry, everybody gets a healing and an uplifting. I mean, it is is an amazing experience. You just, you know, it's just wonderful. You want to do it as much as you can, but then you also, you know, we also try to keep it for genuine reasons. But it's, it's, to me, it's a celebration. To me, it's an act of worship in the sense that it celebrates the fact that we really don't die, all right? Our physical body may die, but the essence of who we are goes on. It how, continues. It is, it is eternal. How does the afterlife healing circle work? It works because, you know, the, there's a person called a conductor, and mm-hmm. they're sort of the, the anchor of the group. And the conductor gets a request from the inquirer. I need to talk to X, Y, and Z. Although the, you try to t- say, don't tell me. You just have a, a need. You've got, and you talk to them about what, what kind of relationship you had with this soul. You know, doesn't matter. That kind of thing. What do you want to get out of this circle? And when the conductor is satisfied that the inquirer has a legenu- genuine need, then the conductor invites a few people, and they get into a circle, and the conductor explains that... You know, you're going to be getting intuitive information through your intuition or psychic senses or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. It may seem strange. It's not for you. It's for the inquirer. And the inquirer is told people will start verbalizing information, say one of three things, yes, no, or I don't know. So the souls, and and again, the most important part is that you ask your spirit guides. Everybody in the group has spirit guides, and you ask for protection. And you ask that only the soul in question, the soul the inquirer wants to connect with, is allowed into the circle. And once you do that, you can do it very safely, and you get involved with any head game players or, mm-hmm. you know, people, souls impersonating other souls. You don't have any of that nonsense. The uh, spirit guides just allow that soul in. The inquirer calls the soul in. And souls seem to recognize that the inquirer will need some sort of evidentiary information, things that only the soul and the inquirer would know. And so the first part of the circle is, you know, oh, remember that time when when I, whatever, you Mm -hmm. know. 
you know, here's a good example. In one circle that Jana was in, the guy sitting next to her, she, she felt intuitively that he kept getting some information, but he was holding back. So she said, come on, you've got something. He said, well, it doesn't make any sense. It's a picket fence, but it's not upright. It's on its side. And the woman who came gasped and said, now I know my son is here. And that was a piece of information that only she and her son would have known. Years before, when he was a boy, he took a picket fence, turned it on its side, and nailed it to the trunk of a tree so that his dog could join him in his treehouse. So that's the kind of information that souls... Hmm will send, and that's the purpose of the people, to help bring that information through. And once the inquirer is convinced that, yes, the soul is here, I want to connect with, then the people who are there help the inquirer and the soul communicate, because sometimes it's usually very emotional, and lots of tears are flowing. So usually the inquirer needs a little help to, to say what he or she wants to say, and get through, and hear in the words of the participants what the soul wants to say to him or her. So the other people that are partaking in the circle, are there for moral support? They're there for moral support, but they're also there for practical help. All mm. right, They become intuitive receptors. They get information. They pass it on. They also add their love. Because the, the unique thing about the circle is that we make a conscious effort directed effort to send love to everybody in the circle and love to the soul in question. It's that love that makes the circle such a profound experience, and everybody loves it, and it, you really just sort of lap it up, because it, 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 it sets up a beautiful, peaceful, loving environment that's very safe and very welcoming, and that's why people can feel like they can come and unburden themselves of grief that perhaps has lasted decades. How does the soul know that you're having your circle? Well, it's sort of like, how do you know that someone's thinking about you? Or, you know, um, maybe you know. On the other side, you are not burdened by a conscious mind. And even if you're in a physical body, mm -hmm. when people think about you, it rings your bell, although if you have a conscious mind, it's sort of hidden. You don't really consciously aware of it, but you kind of know in the back, back at that unconscious level. Well, you're much more aware of things, summonses like that, when you're on the other side, because you are not in a physical body, and you don't have that uh, conscious mind blocking the signal or, foot, you know, that kind of thing. So they ring your bell. You know and they call out your name, and you hear it. I mean, that's the neat thing. Um, Ruth Montgomery, I listened to her many years ago. She was in town where I was and talking, and she said that souls know, they can hear, they can feel, when you pray for them, talk about them, think about them. And that's quite true. They can. So would it be the more people who participate in a circle, the stronger the the um, the connection with the soul on the other side would be? Well, up to a point. After about eight people, you mm -hmm. kind of get diminishing returns because everybody keeps sitting and waiting for the other person to speak up. I see. So you want about four to eight people, all right? You want to make it so that it's uh, there's plenty of love and there's plenty of support. But there's not so much that people can kind of sit, <laughs> fade into the woodwork, so to speak. You want everybody to be an active participant and pump that love and get that information and verbalize it, because it doesn't really matter. If the person says, I don't know, yeah. it doesn't really matter. The more you speak, the more the information comes, and pretty soon you've helped the person, who's the inquirer, you help them become convinced that this is the soul they want to, uh, they want to speak with. Is there any downside of, of, the, of the circle? Well, the only downside I can think of is that sometimes inquirers come with expectations that aren't met. Mm -hmm. uh, one time we had an inquirer who had a very specific emotional um, memory of a day, 
and the the soul, I mean, literally, I saw that soul just throw up his hands in frustration and say, I I don't know what you're talking about. It didn't mean the same thing to me. So the inquirer admitted, yep, this is the soul I wanted to speak to, but she left very frustrated because the soul hadn't shared the same emotional response to that particular moment on that particular day that she had. So... Do souls yeah. get do souls get frustrated often, or is it very <laughs> rare? Well, I think that souls who are not in a physical body can get frustrated as often as we in physical bodies can. Mm. All right, they have lives. Um, what they're doing, and there's as many ways to live in the afterlife, as, even more than there are ways to live on Earth. And just as life on Earth can be frustrating or beautiful. Life after life can be frustrating or beautiful. It's all a journey. What do we know about the other side? Well, I think that when people bring back their their reports mm-hmm. of having died and gone to heaven or died and seen, you know, gone through their life review or everything, it's kind of like dipping a, a, a dipstick into a pond. You get a sample, but it's not the whole picture. All right. So I, all I can say to people who are like, what's life like on the mm-hmm. other side is to, to say, what's life like on Earth? Except it has fewer limitations than life on Earth. So we can expect that life on the other side will be good, bad, boring, mm-hmm. exciting, happy, sad. Um, but they're... they're you know, I've often asked my spirit guides, why do people come back in the physical? And one of the reasons that they tell me is that on Earth, with a, a slower vibration, which is what forms things that we perceive yeah. as physical, it is a different intensity of sensation and a different intensity of learning. And that can be very helpful for souls. And, of course, one of the things, one of the lessons that's specific to this particular planet is releasing fear. All right? Everybody on this planet, at some point, at some level, for over something, has fear. And one of the the things that we work on here is, A, fear, and B, taking back our power. And that's another reason that I love the, he- the afterlife healing circle. It is what I call grassroots spirituality. It is spirituality from the bottom up, not the top down. We do it ourselves in our own way. And that's and it shows people that, wow, yeah, I, I, I can actually do this myself. Mm. I may need help at some times, but I don't have to have a medium or a psychic help me connect with people I need to uh, I need to resolve issues with. I can do this myself, or I can help other people do it, and that's also very empowering. How long does the average healing circle per person take? About 45 minutes? At least 45 minutes. Usually, um, some have gone longer, um, you know, at 45 minutes mm-hmm. to an hour and a half. Some go really quickly. I mean, it's just, it's there. They, they know it's there. They can feel it. They're convinced. Everybody's happy, and it's done. Other times, there's a little bit of back and forth as the soul says, okay, what kind of information can I send that will help this person be convinced it's really me? It is. It's me. You know, because, again, they don't have a physical body. You right. can't hear their voice. So they have to, to try to find some piece of information that's uniquely known between them and the inquirer, and it can come through to the other people, they will voice it, and then the inquirer will say, okay, yeah, I'm convinced the soul is here. So that can sometimes take a little bit of time. Is there any question that is taboo when communicating with the other side? I think it depends on the soul. I see. All right? Some some subjects are, you know, souls have issues with, and they don't mm-hmm. want to hear about it, just like some people have issues with certain subjects, and they don't want to hear about it. Right. So again... It's, it's not a question of it's, it's taboo because they're mm-hmm. on the other side. It's a question of it may be t- taboo or delicate or whatever because of that soul's particular issues or the acquirer's particular issues. What happens if the soul just doesn't want to speak to the person? 
um, you don't get any resolution. That's what happens. I mean, nothing, nothing untoward will happen. It right. might be very frustrating. I have found that usually souls are eager. If, if, if a person on this side is eager for resolution mm-hmm. with someone, that soul is probably just as, as if not more wow. eager for resolution, especially, like I said, when there's that two-way emotional connection there's some unfinished business and it's it's not just unfinished for this person on this side it is unfinished for the soul on that side you know the woman with the picket fence yes her her son she could not get anybody to investigate her take a step back in time and discover old florida cuisine at marsh landing restaurant in felsmere florida Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Lang's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere, or visit marshlanding.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back, everyone. Candace Talmadge is our special guest, along with Jana L. Simons. She's written a very interesting book, a book that, that teaches you, that lets you know that there is no such thing as a final goodbye. You don't have to have the regret of not being able to have said, I love you, or given someone who has passed on to the other side. You know, you don't have to live with guilt. You don't have to live with sorrow. And this book will help you understand on how you can connect with the other side. Candace, as always, a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on the Exxon. And I was wondering if you could share with the Exxon Nation around the world your thoughts on connecting with the other side. Well, my thought is that if you have a legitimate need and a two-way emotional tie to the soul you want to connect with, mm-hmm. then, then you have every right to do it, and you, you, that soul probably needs it as much as you do. So find some way to do it. Maybe it's through the afterlife healing circle. Maybe it's through mirror gazing. Maybe it's just in a dream or asking that soul to send you a sign. I don't really care. What I want for you is to get the resolution that you need and deserve. Now, where can people get copies of your book, dear? Well, uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, it's on, you know, on, available online. Mm-hmm. They can order it through a bookstore. Uh, it's available in paperback and ebook versions. Um, it, you know, it's it's not hard to find. And if you go to my website, um, we have links to all that kind of good stuff. Excellent. What's next in line for you, Candace? What are you going to be up to next? Uh, well, I'd like to say no good, but it'll probably just be. <laughs> but it'll probably just be writing, writing more of my fiction series, and and right now I'm working on a chapter to contribute to another book on uh, attraction. So, lots of stuff like that. Um, we live in a very perplexed world these days. It seems that each and every day tensions are, you know, just increasing. We have the conflicts in the Middle East. We have Russia flexing its might. We have North Korea uh, tampering with nuclear weapons. We have China that has ticked off the United States because the, the United States is just following international law. How do you see this as it might relate to how the other side perceives what's going on on this side of the veil? Well, I'm sure that they're aware of it. Um, it's probably just as perplexing to some of them, if they're, mm-hmm. especially if they're spirit guides with people who are involved in the thick of it. Um, 
I think that some of them come back because they want to help. All right? That's definitely to be of service, to try to bring peace and healing. Right. Um, so, you know, all I can say is that when you are as aware of the continuity of life as I have become through my work as an energy healer and through the afterlife healing circle, this doesn't seem like... Um, it, 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 it sort of has a little perspective on it, let's put it that way. Candace, thank you so much for joining us, and I look forward to the next time you join us back here in the x And please, don't, be, don't let it be so long. I, thank you, Rob. I will be glad to be back. Take care of yourself, Candace, and my congratulations to your co-author, Jana L. Simons, as well. Well, that's it for tonight, Exo Nation. I want to take this opportunity of thanking each and every one of you for being part of the show and for allowing us to enter your home, your car, no matter where you are. You know, we are our brother's keepers. So if you can help somebody out, whether it be by giving them money,